Hello, everyone, and well, Nintendo had another interesting week. Um, it wasn't long ago that we had the Nintendo Alarmo and Nintendo Switch playtest. And this week, we got Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition, which is coming out on March 20th, 2025. And we got Nintendo Music. Now, the timing of these things is certainly interesting, and I think uh, very intentional because they both were revealed the week before their investor meeting. Uh, many people, myself included, have talked about that date, like, oh, Nintendo's going to announce news. If the Switch 2 does get revealed, it'll likely be before that date, because they did that with the original Switch, where they did the trailer the week before the investor meeting in 2016. And that tends to be a pattern, that they like to have news out before then, so technically they have more stuff on the books, and can, you know, point to stuff that they're doing and initiatives they have. Well, that investor pattern held true and that Nintendo does indeed announce stuff the week before. But it was, of course, not the Switch 2. I am personally not surprised by that. I made a video um, talking about Platonic kind of teasing that uh, their ukulele remaster was going to be out on a new, you know, Nintendo system unspecified. But I talked about how there was a real chance that that was a kind of marketing gimmick for them, you know, emphasizing that, oh, look it, we could be coming out on, you know, the Nintendo device we can't talk about. That would make the game get more attention and more people would promote it. And uh, so there was reasons to be kind of pessimistic that that was a strong hint that it would actually be revealed soon, but it could kind of go either way. And it ended up going the way that it was not. And that was more of a marketing gimmick, let's say. They could have certainly just waited um, for the Switch 2 to get revealed, you know, possibly early next year, and then just confirmed it was coming to the platform, but they wanted that kind of boost. So, um, with all that being said, you know, what does that mean? We got a lot of stuff in the last, you know, few weeks, right? Nintendo has announced multiple, like, surprising kind of off-the-wall things, like Alarmo, the Switch Online Playtest. Now you have the Nintendo Music app. That's a lot of things that are not necessarily, like, normal announcements every day of the week. And we have a remaster of a highly requested game. I would say uh, the Zelda, you know, HD games on Wii U, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, as well as Xenoblade Chronicles X were kind of the last remaining ones that are like heavily requested. There technically are a few stragglers that have not made it over, like Yoshi's Woolly World, for instance. But in general, those were kind of the three like big remaining ones. And now we have one on the books. Well, I think it's interesting, and I think it does point to what everyone has kind of said. Yeah, the Switch 2 is not going to get revealed this year, right? Like, there's just no way. Um, the By the investor meeting was clearly the deadline, and while technically I'm recording this on November 2nd, and they could just drop a, I don't know, a November 4th trailer out of nowhere, that seems like that's not going to happen. Stuff like this, that's all the stuff they just recently announced would get overshadowed. And if they were going to do it, this would have been the week. Instead of getting news on Nintendo Music and Xenoblade, we would have gotten the Switch 2. So what does that mean for the investor meeting? Because as I've said previously, I've talked about how there was a very real possibility it wouldn't be announced before the investor meeting. This was just kind of our final week. Well, if I had to guess, I think that Nintendo still will acknowledge... Um, the Switch 2, or the Switch successor, as they've only officially called it up to this point, at their investor meeting. Um, if you remember, Nintendo in May, when they first acknowledged the Nintendo Switch successor, as their president, Shintaro Furukawa, put it, they told investors, and they even publicly tweeted, that it would be talked about this fiscal year which of course would take us up to march 31st 2025 so sometime between 
May this year when they first said it and March 31st in 2025, we were going to hear some details and details would likely mean it being revealed. So when I think about that, I can't help but go, why say that in May at all, right? That seems a little weird. Um, and I feel like at that point, when you're that close to June, which would have been the normal kind of traditional timeline of kind of hearing big news, that was like the old school like E3 month and big news still does happen in June. If they were saying that in May, um, I have to feel like they had a decent hint or a decent internal idea about when they wanted to deliver more. But once they did that, if you remember, they started having like every video they posted, every Nintendo Direct, they added no information on the Nintendo Switch accessory will be revealed and not, it will not be discussed, blah, 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 right? Every video kind of had that attached to it. Even the Nintendo Museum, they had to say, we will not discuss the Nintendo Switch successor, even though I feel like any reasonable person wouldn't expect it in like a little tour of a museum. But they felt like they had to do it. And they only felt like they had to do that because they themselves went out of the way to go, hey, we're going to reveal it this fiscal year. So in my opinion, that feels like a weird thing to say. I always thought it was. And that feels like a thing with it now not being revealed. That could have been first said on November 5th at their investor meeting coming up, right? That could have been a good quote for this investor meeting now. Like, don't say that earlier in the year. Say that then. It's going to be revealed this fiscal year. They would then be officially confirming, oh, in the next few months, they're going to reveal it, right? That would be a pretty reasonable thing that would be news oh nintendo hasn't said anything all year but finally they say here's a window when we're going to share more that would be okay but because they confirmed they would talk about this fiscal year so early in the year it made people think hey maybe they will show something in 2024 so that makes me feel like we are going to get it mentioned in some way shape or form I think that they will kind of acknowledge that window once again, and that becomes the you know big kicker is, does Furukawa go, you know, we will share more on the Nintendo Switch successor this fiscal year, which would be the exact same quote again, or is there more of a uh, narrowed down time frame? And I think that does have a chance of happening. Again, not guaranteed. They could completely dodge it. I do think there's a very real chance that Furukawa goes, yes, we are going to give details on the Nintendo Switch successor after the new year in January, or insert another month, right? Because this fiscal year would mean January, February, or March, and I wouldn't be shocked if they just give a month. And or, I wouldn't be shocked, and this would be like the biggest news, I guess, yes, we are going to reveal the Nintendo Switch before the end of this fiscal year, and we are going to release it in insert time frame here, right? Um, like, you know, when is it coming out? Is it later in 2025 now? Is it still going to potentially be, you know, a middle of the year, a, a, a you know second quarter? I've seen some people speculate about that. A May, June kind of thing, because that would still be reasonable. You could easily reveal it in January and release it, you know, four or five months later if they want to go in the first half. There are plenty of different opportunities and ways they could go. And it wouldn't shock me if they narrow things down a little bit. You know, in the past with Nintendo, we have had some moments where they just kind of share some details, um, giving their investors and the public information while not like going full bore with a reveal or anything. Um, you know, I can point you to this image here on March 23rd, 2010, where Nintendo, you know, their then late great Satori Wada said, we will launch the Nintendo 3DS during the fiscal year ending March 2011. And at that time, you know, that was March. That's what that was the, before the end of the fiscal year. It, they didn't actually confirm at that time that it would come out in Q1 of 2011 the end of that fiscal year could have still meant it was a holiday release. And I do remember people at that time going, is the 3DS coming out this November? 
or is it going to be early next year? And it ended up being early next year. And I'm pretty confident at this time, Nintendo knew it was probably going to come out early the following year when they said by the end of next fiscal, right? So they were kind of leaving a lot of room open, but they really probably knew the window. And I kind of have a feeling for Okawa in this day and age did as well. When he said, we will talk about it this fiscal year, it kind of makes me believe that at that time, he still was not planning a, you know, October trailer or a September trailer or whatever, like we were hoping. Um, it just leads me to believe that. Um, here's another image I could point you to um, when it regards to the Switch, when it was still called the NX. Nintendo, in April 27th, 2016, just flat out said, March 2017, the next generation of Nintendo arrives, right? Like, it was still a code name. There were no details, but they just kind of were saying, yeah, our next thing is going to be out by next March. So, like, confirming details, but not doing, like, the big reveal. And I still feel like that is potentially possible at the investor meeting where they just give a little like generic narrow down the window a bit in terms of either a a reveal or b flat out like the release period of the system you know so let's say the console is coming out you know in the second half of 2025 or it's coming out in the first half or whatever i could see something like that narrowed down at this investor meeting like acknowledging the switch accessor will come out next year and blah 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 in a window not giving a specific date i do not believe or anything like that but narrowing things down i think could possibly happen because again i think it's weird that they flat out said we will talk about this fiscal year in may when that's very early to do it because that brings attention to the fact that it's on the horizon which if you weren't going to reveal this year pretty unnecessary because if all anything that can make people go ooh, you know maybe i should hold off on you know upgrading my switch to an oled or whatever because they're saying they're already talking about when you know when they'll talk about their next console flat out saying this fiscal year could have put some people off when you did it that early but it was understandable if you were going to reveal the system this year right like if you're going to reveal more details about the system then you had to start talking at some point. But if you were going to hold off entirely until 2025, even hinting at it that early seems kind of pointless to me. Um, so that could be a hint that, yeah, at each investor meeting, Furukawa feels like he has to give a little bit of details, and that can might get kicked a little further down the road. But if last time we got that quote of, we'll talk about this fiscal year, this investor meeting, it wouldn't shock me if we get a quote that is like, yeah, clearly we haven't revealed it yet, but we're going to narrow down that window for you and tell you, yeah, you're going to hear about it in January or something like that. So is there anything else to take from this? Well, one thing that I can't help but think about is right now Nintendo does have Donkey Kong Country Returns HD and Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition for January and March. Um, obviously both are, uh, remasters, neither is a, you know, a big new game, but they're very notable games that are getting their first appearance on Switch, so they still both could do well, but that does kind of make me a little suspicious, I guess I would say. Again, I'm hoping if the Switch 2 is not going to reveal this year, which it clearly does not seem like it is, you know, January would make a lot of sense to me, right? Uh, that was the Nintendo Switch. Uh, the original one's big event was in January. And we would like to hear about it as soon as the calendar flips to the next year. But I am kind of suspicious now about having a January thing and a February, excuse me, a January thing and a March thing makes me go, Maybe February is the window, right? Maybe February is the window because they don't have anything that month to focus on. They don't got to focus on, you know, selling a new game then. And, you know, they could easily have backwards compatibility or even say, you know, certain games are going to be 
you know, we'll, we'll introduce a patch for the new system that run, runs at higher resolutions. For instance, next month, Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition is releasing, and when the Switch 2 releases, you will be able to enjoy that game at higher resolutions or whatever, right? Um, so nothing in that month to get in the way, and enough time to even, you know, potentially tease that it might be a good thing for future games. We're still going to support the regular Switch with some stuff, as you can see, but they may also be enhanced on the new console. So I kind of hope that's not the case, that it isn't February, uh, because, yeah, if they're not going to show the Switch this year, I really just want them to reveal it in January, of course. But I'll be honest, when I look at the recent news, I feel like that might be the most obvious month at this point. But we have to wait and see. So again... Uh, the investor meeting is only in a few short days from the recording of this video, and I do expect some interesting quotes to come out of it, um, even if they're not amazing, right? I totally think Furukawa and Nintendo will kind of dodge anything, you know, too outrageous or too spicy. But as I said, we did get in May that big comment, you know, confirming we would see it this fiscal year. And that is something, right? Them just acknowledging, yeah, we're going to talk about the Switch successor this fiscal year was worthwhile. You know, it was definitely a news piece in May. So I do think we'll get something out of this next investor meeting as well. But how spicy it'll be, well, we have to wait and see. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any opinions on Nintendo's recent moves, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.